do not feed the squirrels in the cemetery. people of the internet welcome back to England yes as you can see I am back in England with road traffic I didn't miss that but it is what it is let me explain what I'm going to be doing in this video if you've been following my channel you will recognize this pattern I recently made this outfit without the skirt which is still pending it will come and with two pieces instead of one video down below and since the top turned out so well I want to make another version of it now I really don't like these blouses but I think I can adapt the sleeves to something that might be rather nice my plan for this is to take the pattern of this top and attach these sleeves but instead of leaving them loose at the bottom add an elastic and gather them to make them into puff sleeves. Will it work? I hope so. Materials. First off, we've got fabrics, of course. And you know what's coming. Here's my bag of fabric. I want to use two contrasting fabrics for this. For the body, I want to use this red cotton fabric. It's basically just t-shirt fabric and the slip fabric, if you've been following me, you'll also recognize this one, is the famous tartan that I used for my skirt video. If you've just arrived here now and you don't know what skirt I'm talking about, I will link the video in here. That one was a struggle, so enjoy my pain. I thought of this fabric for the sleeves because it's a lot lighter and I think it would make the puff be really puffy, which I like. To make the gather sleeve stay and to be able to put my hand through, I needed some elastic, which I haven't bought. But I figured in the spirit of reusing what you already have or whatever, I thought I might use this instead. I bought this elastic thing a while ago. To use as the waistband for ballet skirts, as for thread, I'm planning on using this one. It's the same silk thread that I've been using in my previous projects. That's what I'm going to use for the closures. I've already made a very similar top to this one and I made it completely by hand. So what I'm going to be doing is explaining things a lot less because you can go and watch that previous video I will link it here in case you are interested in that and I'm also going to be using a sewing machine to speed up the process the pattern is already cut so in theory it shouldn't take that long so without further ado let's get started first I'm cutting the six pieces I need for the body three for the exterior and three for the lining You can see that I folded in a bit of the front pattern piece. This is so that the front of the top will cross less than in my previous version. I managed to cut all the pieces in one go, which very much pleased my big lazy self. I'm not cutting the sleeves yet because the tartan fabric is very prone to fraying and I want to minimize that. Also, yes. I'm using doorstops as pattern weights, don't judge. Here I'm drawing all the darts and seam allowances. Next, I'm basting the darts to prepare them for sewing. trying to figure 
figure out the sewing machine. I have the instructions, luckily, so I'm going to have a look at those just in case they're any different to the sewing machine that my mom has, which is the one that I've used in my bikini top video. Let me see if I can actually figure this out. Test number one. Okay. That looks all right. Sewing by machine is terrifying. I never get this stressed when I sew by hand. In fact, I find it very relaxing. This is very stressful, <laughs> which is why these things are the devil. Just saying. So, let's sew a million darts. Not bad. One dart sewn, 11 to go. <laughs> I've now pasted the pieces together and I'm going to sew them. We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm pinning and basting the outside layer to the lining, right sides facing each other. Now I'm sewing all the basted seams and turning the garment right sides out. I'm drawing and cutting a long rectangle for the waistband. One side of the waistband is sewn to the garment, right sides together. The short edges of the waistband are sewn right sides together like I'm showing here. The waistband is turned and the loose side is pinned to the inside and sewn with whip stitches. The body is now finished, you can see here how it is done. It's slip time, which is the most terrifying part of this project. Coffee. Break. Originally my plan for the sleeve was something completely different, I've changed my mind because of issues. This is the sleeve that I have, which I cannot use as it is, because this border is ever so slightly smaller than the armhole of the body. However, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I'm going to modify the sleeve pattern to make it puffier. And yesterday, luckily, I found a very handy tutorial on the internet about how to draft puffy sleeves from a base sleeve that I happen to have. I will put the link to the tutorial down below if you are interested. Now sleeves! First, I'm transferring the base pattern to a random piece of paper, which I don't mind destroying. I'm drawing a line across between the two points where the curve starts. Then I'm drawing seven perpendicular lines from the first one, which are more or less evenly spaced. It's also important to number each section. The base pattern is divided in eight sections using the vertical lines. All the sections are pasted in order onto another random piece of paper making sure to leave one inch in between each of them. The curve is 
evened out to form the new pattern. Okay, so I think I've got a sleeve. It looks so cool. Finally, the new pattern is transferred to pattern paper. I am now cutting the sleeves from the tartan fabric and marking the seam allowances with chalk. While the fabric is still flat, I'm running two parallel gathering threads on the curved edge. I'm sewing the side seam by machine and finishing it by hand on the wrong side. To do that, I'm trimming one of the seam allowances to half the length wrapping the long side over the short one to hide the raw edges and sewing it flat against the inside of the sleeve with whip stitches. The next step is the elasticated edge of the sleeve. I'm folding the edge twice and basting it in place to create a channel for the elastic. Then I'm sewing it with a whip stitch leaving a small gap to put the elastic in. I'm using a safety pin to run the elastic through the channel. Next, I'm sewing the two edges of the elastic together with two rows of back stitches. Finally, the gap in the channel is closed using whip stitches, making sure the fabric is flat while doing so. The finished sleeve is pinned to the armhole, matching the middle of it to the shoulder seam of the body and the side seam to the side seam of the body. Then it's gathered until it has the same length as the armhole. The sleeves are sewn to the body by machine. I forgot to film this yesterday, but I have finished the edges of the tartan fabric against the seam allowance of the red fabric. I trimmed the other seam allowance a little bit, but I'm going to leave it raw because this fabric doesn't fray and that means we only have buttons and buttonholes left. First, I'm marking the placement of the buttonholes and the buttons. I'm slashing the two layers of fabric carefully with my nail scissors and sewing the buttonhole using a buttonhole stitch and silk buttonhole twist. As usual, I haven't filmed the sewing of the buttons because they are buttons and pretty much self-explanatory. people around. Do not feed the squirrels in the cemetery. It's basic, mate. Basic. It's done. I'm so excited because it kind of worked. Is it perfect? No, by no means. But it's good enough. I'm rather surprised how well this leaves came out considering this top wasn't meant to have sleeves. One problem was the buttonholes, which aren't particularly nice. The buttonholes stretched out a lot and they look kind of rough and not very nice. I had to cheat a little bit and 
so shut the very edge so that they look a bit smaller. This is where my ignorance as a sewist comes in because I haven't used different types of fabrics and I don't know how they respond to certain things. You can, you can probably like see, I mean, they look a bit rough and still too big but eh. um, to be honest probably only my mother would notice and comment on that so eh. good enough i hope you enjoyed the video this was a little bit of a chaotic one because i wasn't really thinking about my next project which i am extremely excited about i hope you still enjoyed it as always, I have uploaded some high quality pictures of the top to my website. The link to my website is below. And if you think you might want to watch some more sewing shenanigans, series every time. When I get my own place, I'm telling you, I'm getting a place with windows that block everything. And if you would like to see more shenanigans in the future, sewing or otherwise, Feel free to subscribe in the button link thing below the video. Hopefully, I will see you soon. Bye!